Good morning and welcome to Coffee and Prayer at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church. My French roast is hot today. I'm Pastor Ted Peters. Today is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, but tomorrow, August 15th, is a, is a special day for our Roman Catholic friends. It's the Assumption of Mary. Some of you might remember Mary, the mother of our Lord, a little bit this morning. In the meantime, Let's open our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our colic prayer. God of tender care, like a mother and like a father, you never forget your children. You know already what we need. In all our anxiety, give us trusting and faithful hearts that in confidence we may embody the peace and justice of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth your saving power among all nations let the peoples praise you O god let all the peoples praise you let the nations be glad and sing for joy for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth Selah, let the peoples praise you O god let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God our God has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Romans 11, 1 through 2, 29 through 32. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake, but as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of our, their ancestors, for the gifts and the calling of God are revocable, just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In honor of tomorrow, the gospel for today will be taken from Luke 2, the Magnificat. Mary said, 
My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. God has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Here ends the gospel for this morning. How many people do you know with the name Mary or Marianne or another variant? During the Magnificat, Mary the mother of our Lord predicts that all generations will call me blessed and what a way to remember the contribution to world history made by this humble Jewish woman in Israel and to name your child Mary and every every woman that I know named Mary I don't know I just kind of I don't like them. August 15th. Tomorrow is a solemn feast day for our Roman Catholic friends. It's the Assumption of Mary. It's difficult to accept that Mary, the mother of our Lord, would be a sinner like the rest of us. I say it's difficult, but be that as it may, Mary's a human being like us with great faith in God. So instead of dying, a tradition has arisen that suggests that Mary is born by angels near the end of her life that carry her up to heaven. We saw that with some of the great art of Titian and Peter Paul Rubens. On November 1st, 1950, Pope Pius XII defined the Assumption of Mary to be a dogma of faith. The Pope says, we pronounce, declare, and define it to be a divinely revealed dogma that the Immaculate, Immaculate means... Mary herself was born utero clauso, that means without original sin, that the Immaculate Mother of God, the traditional word is Theotokos, not just the mother of the human Jesus, no, the mother of God, the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. That's the end of what Pope Pius XII said. Well, did the Pope invent the idea of the Assumption of Mary? No. No, as uh, the history of Christian art shows, it's been around for quite a while. This is a very elegant, tender, yet pomp, pompful, pompous, I hate to use the word pompous, but pompful way of celebrating the Assumption of Mary. Now, if you look for August 15 on your German calendar, you're going to come to Maria Himmelfahrtstag. Would you like 
a day named after you called Maria Himmelfahrtstag? <laughs> I don't find that complimentary to the mother of our Lord. Kind of breaks the mood. Is the assumption of Mary in the Bible? No. Revelation chapter 12 talks about a woman who's caught up in a battle between good and evil, and many might want to put Mary on the side of the good fighting against evil. Well, I think we need to honor, revere, celebrate, emulate, and imitate Mary, the mother of our Lord, to be sure, but if you get too extravagant assumption into heaven, body, and soul without passing through death, even Jesus Christ had to pass through death, or in some cases speak of Mary as co-redemptrix, that is to say, helping Jesus out in the work of salvation, these are the kinds of things that give Lutherans intestinal upset. They say way, way, way too much, and they compromise what we know about God's work of salvation in Jesus Christ. No, Mary's not co-redemptrix, a sharer in your and my salvation. But, my goodness, doesn't she provide us with a model of faith and willingness and servitude. God calls upon Mary for a special mission in life. God calls upon you and me for a special mission in life. And that thrills Mary's soul. I've been chosen by God, she says. Then my soul magnifies God. How about today? Can your soul and my soul magnify God? Listen to your people praying. Thank you, Danny. Would you join me now in the <clears throat> prayers of intercession? We come to you, O God of resurrection with feet stuck in the world of the cross. Around us and among us, People are dying by the tens of thousands, victims of the rampant COVID-19 disease. Like a horse from the apocalypse, the plague gallops through our community without regard to whom it brings grief. As you brought refuge and strength to the psalmist, bring us a portion of that strength here and now. O oh God, you are our sword and our shield. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Please say our prayer out loud. God of truth and wisdom, 
It is difficult for us to think clearly these days. We are bombarded daily by contradictory and confusing communications. We don't know which leaders or which experts to trust. Send us your spirit of truth. Open our eyes and ears to discern your guidance. Become the light unto our path. O oh God, you are our rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, guide the President of the United States, his cabinet and counselors, and all in authority over our nation, that they may be just in purpose, wise in counsel, unwavering in duty. In the administration of their solemn responsibilities, may they uphold the honor of our nation and secure the welfare and production of all people. Holy Trinity, you show us the splendor of diversity and beauty of unity in your own divine life. Make us, who come from many nations and many languages, a united people who delight in your many different gifts. Give those whom we have entrusted with authority the spirit of wisdom, that there may be peace and justice throughout our land. O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians and nurses and home health aides, medical researchers in the World Health Organization. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. O oh God, you provide our everlasting home in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in acute and long-term need, for those suffering for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick and awaiting death, and for those in the cross and crown family who who we're thinking about today. Paul, Paula's, Barb, Richard, Lynn, Jonita, Deborah, Richard, Stephen, Ditka, Lynn, Abigail, Linda. Long-term healing, Joanne, Carol, Chris, Chris, Roger, Sawyer, Ed, Gabe, Mark, and Kendra. Our homebound, involuntarily homebound, Robert and Leona, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Beverly, and Ginny. Oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me. Pray out loud the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Yeah, my coffee cooled off. I'm going to have to pour another cup. Bye. Oh!